Howdy, howdy. Welcome to the Grok Shop. This is part three in my series on universal remotes. In the previous videos, we covered basic configuration and using simpleset.com. And in addition to that, uh, we covered JP1 basic configuration. And this video will be getting into how to customize your upgrades or devices with uh, discrete code programming and also pronto code translation if needed. So in the previous video, I showed how to locate upgrades on the HiFiRemote.com site. Um, and that's a great way to go. But in some cases, you can't find one close enough. Uh, and it may be missing a lot of functionality. And that was the case with my AV receiver. Uh, and so in this video, I'm going to uh, spend a lot of time focusing on how I went about fixing that problem. So the first thing first, I'm going to add a new upgrade by opening this um, upgrade file, which is a text file I downloaded from the HiFi remote site. So this upgrade was probably built against some remote that's not in the current database um, that comes with RMIR. Um, just hit OK. It doesn't really matter. Everything's going to be remapped anyway. So since we're adding a new upgrade to this remote, the tool will map only what directly maps by name. So you see a bunch of stuff in red, which is unmapped. Just start mapping like here. I'm going to map the menu button to menu on. And I'm going to map info to, let's see, um, display. Where's display? There it is. Now for me, I found the exit wasn't working, so I decided to map exit to menu off. That worked pretty good. So by downloading and starting out with this upgrade, I was put on the right path uh, by having the right protocol and some functionality did work. However, I was still not able to do some things I wanted to do. So I headed over to the manufacturer of my AV receivers website. So this is the site for my receiver. It's a SR6006 and you can see the upgrade I have is a SR7200, which is a much older model. Um, Marantz is pretty great. They've got tons of documentation. Uh, there may be similar documentation for some other manufacturers, but it might not be as good as Marantz. I was pretty impressed. So there's a little overlap in some of these documents. The one I ended up uh, going with was this Marantz RC codes, all AVR amp, blah, 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 blah. So the document downloads as an Excel spreadsheet. And in here you can see it's got multiple receivers. I'm there in the middle. Um, the functionality is listed on the left under zone and command name. And then right here in the middle has system command and extension. This is the discrete code information that we'll be using to configure functions in RMIR. And off to the right here are hex codes, which is in Pronto hex code format for Marantz. And I'll be showing how to translate these for cases where um, you need to translate them. Although in my particular case, I can just use these discrete codes directly. So one of the issues I had was um, I didn't have a power toggle. I had a discrete power on and power off function, but I didn't have a power toggle function. So I'm going to add that here. Now note that when you highlight a number for a row uh, and you press the new button, it'll insert a new row above the row that you have highlighted. So now for this protocol that the Marantz is using, there's two types of functions. There's RC5, which are like basic functions, and then there's RC5X ones. Now the one here that I have highlighted in blue, which is the power toggle, is a basic RC5 function. I know it's basic because there's a dash for extension on the Marantz spreadsheet. So for RC5 function, system maps to device and command maps to OBC. So now I'll just select that it's an RC5, not an RC5X and set the RC5 device to 16 and set the OBC or command to 12. And that's it. That's all there is to adding a new RC5 function. 
So now if I go to the layout tab and select the power button, I can map it to my new function, which is power on off toggle. And I tested it out, works beautiful. So the next thing I was missing was input source stepping. So the ability to step from one source on the AV receiver to the next and back, and here they are. So I'll add this function to the area of the existing functions where it already has some inputs. Try to keep it organized. So since this command has a number listed in the extension field, I know it's an RC5X. So now for RC5X, device is still device, but command is now sub device. So command is going to be zero, device is 16, and extension is now OBC, which is 13 in this case. So again, double check looking at my blue line up there. I've got device 16, subdevice 0, which is command, and extension 13, which is the OBC now. So that was input next. I'll follow the same procedure for input previous or input prev or input back. So I'll go ahead and assign the button. I'm actually just going to assign one button here to input next since it's kind of labeled that way on this remote. Maybe I'll use the input prev later, or maybe I won't. So the next thing I had, I had um, one input for my SAT, which was uh, VCR2 DSS. Actually existed already as DSS. I just decided to create a new one here. And the one I used for my Cody, which is called game, uh, actually didn't exist at all. So I went ahead and added that too. Let's sped these up a little bit, basically just uh, applying the same mapping I explained already. And since these are my two most common inputs, I decided to uh, hotkey them to the uh, red and uh, green colored buttons here. Okay, now in some cases, you may not be able to get the device and command and extension like I'm using here. You may just have these pronto hex codes. Um, I had to do this for one or two things on my TV, um, but there's a tool for this. If you have the hex code, you can download this tool called IR tool. Um, and it has a uh, DLL file that goes along with it. And uh, make sure that if you uh, get the tool, you get the DLL file, put it in the same folder. The DLL is decode ir.dll. Make sure you have the one from 525 2010. Some others I've tried didn't work. Uh, there might be some others that work, but this one works for sure. So just paste in your hex codes and hit decode hex. And you can see this is an RC5X code. Device is 16, subdevice 0, and OBC 62. Right? And that matches just exactly what the spreadsheet shows. Don't worry, I'll be putting links to all this stuff in the description below. Um, but yeah, you can see back in the um, RMIR tool, um, everything matches what we previously entered for that uh, particular game input. So a quick note regarding these EFC codes, like the Pronto decode tool will give you the EFC code. Um, I found that if you enter it manually, um, it messes up the other codes like the OBC code. Um, I'm not sure why you're allowed to enter it manually in this situation, but um, basically I let the tool calculate the EFC codes and just enter the other information as I've shown here. Okay, so the last functions I want to add are surround mode um, next and back. 
and um, the, these have a special um, case where the sub device is larger than 63. Now when you do RC5X protocol um, you have to basically use a RC5X device that's uh, been set up um, to support that. And you see right here I don't have any device 16's that are set up to support greater than 64. We fix that in the setup tab. Um, you can come in here and make sure you've got uh, at least one of these set up for device 16 and sub device greater than 63. In my case the device is 16. Anyway you can see it shows up here in the pull down and uh, then you can continue on just like before. So I'll configure the button for the surround mode preve later, um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Make sure you uh, rename your, uh, give a new description to your device upgrade and make it yours. You go ahead and assign it to a device button. Um, if you want to, I went ahead and assigned mine to the audio button. Fix any typos you might have. And if you want, change the device type. Um, I think I ch changed mine to, uh, amp yes amp the device type supposedly can affect what buttons are available and the layout menu um, I didn't see it made a whole lot of difference maybe in the phantom buttons but um, we didn't really get into that here so you may want to experiment with it but I'm not sure it matters all that much so that's how it's done for the discrete and pronto codes. Be sure to check out my last video in the series, which will cover the extender, which is pretty cool.